Bottomless and mysterious, the sky twinkling down on us with thousands of stars has enchanted people since the beginning of times. Curiosity has always pushed mankind to explore new expanses and break new grounds. Eventually, the thirst for knowledge and the technological progress enabled us to start exploring beyond our native planet. This step stirred scientists' curiosity still more, and very soon, new space wanderers left the Earth to travel to different corners of the solar system and even further. They were devoid of emotions and senses of either doubt or fear, for these scouts of the universe were machines. Roughly half a year before this video was posted, on the 15th of April 2021, the automatic space probe New Horizons became the fifth spacecraft in the history of the humanity to go beyond the point of 50 astronomical units from the Sun. It was the voyages that had crossed this mark before, with the probes Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 the first ever to do so. None of these space wanderers are likely to ever return to the Earth. With some of them still active on their missions, others have gone quiet forever. Spacecraft New Horizons Start of mission 19th of January 2006 Distance to Earth 52 astronomical units Speed 14 km per second or 3 astronomical units per year Main goal Pluto and Charon Mission status Successfully completed Condition operational. Just like most other interplanetary space probes, New Horizons performed a gravity assist maneuver near Jupiter before setting out to its target. Not only did it greatly boost the spacecraft's speed, but also allowed it to capture high quality images of the largest planet in the solar system alongside its satellites. Besides, the probe's cameras captured the first video ever of an erupting volcano on the surface of Jupiter's satellite Io. After the gravity boost had been completed, the probe made for the main target, Pluto. The spacecraft reached the planetoid's environs in January 2015. The mission's main goal was to explore Pluto and Charon from different perspectives that involved taking photos of and mapping these remote space object surfaces. In addition, the probe estimated the magnetic field's values and the solar wind activity close to the objects and collected information about their atmospheres and surface reflection properties. It goes without saying that the program also involved search for Pluto's as yet undetected satellites and more accurate measurements of Pluto's orbit's parameters. Having completed the main mission, the probe continued to be useful. It flew beyond Pluto's orbit and went on to explore objects in the Kuiper Belt. That is how images of Kwawa, R1 and Arakoth were produced. Thanks to the probe's cameras, the distances to the stars Proxima Centauri and Wolf 359 were measured. Unfortunately, the radioisotope generator on board the spacecraft is expected to start running low from 2026 and eventually all the meters will switch off one after another. New Horizons will continue on its way beyond the boundaries of the solar system and by the year 2038, the distance between the probe and the Sun will have grown to be a hundred astronomical units. By that time, the energy generator on board the spacecraft will have stopped operating completely and it will be impossible to get any connection with it. Following a hyperbolic orbit, New Horizons will exit our system, never to come back. The same thing happened with two other probes, Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11. They hit an escape trajectory from the solar system a while ago. In fact, they were the first automatic space probes ever to be sent into interstellar space by humans. Spacecraft Pioneer 10 Start of mission 3rd of March 1972 Distance to Earth 127 astronomical units. Speed, approximately 12 km per second or 2.5 astronomical units per year. Main goal, Jupiter. Mission status, successfully completed. Condition, not operational. 
The spacecraft reached Jupiter's system on the 4th of December 1973 after completing a 641-day journey through space. During the mission, images of the gas giant's surface and its largest satellites were beamed back to the Earth, and the planet's atmospheric composition and magnetic field were gauged. In addition, Jupiter was found to emit two and a half times more thermal energy than it receives from the Sun. The data, unique at the time, became the basis for understanding the makeup of gas giants and their satellites. The trajectory of the second probe, Pioneer 11, through space passed Jupiter too, but its main target was the other gas giant of our system, Saturn. The probe's scientific instruments gauged the planet's magnetic field and the cameras on board took quite a few snapshots not only of the gas giant itself and its system of rings, but also two of its satellites, Titan and Mimas. According to the estimates, the current distance between Pioneer 11 and the center of our system is around 106 astronomical units. On completing their main mission, both probes continued on their way, moving further and further away from the Sun. Unfortunately, both of them are out of range now, with the last signal from Pioneer 10 received back in 2003. The last signal from Pioneer 11 was received in 1995. Supposedly, both of them are now rapidly moving beyond the boundaries of the solar system. Incidentally, having no chance of ever catching up with either of the two probes we are going to talk about next, the Pioneers were launched at a much earlier date. Spacecraft Voyager 1 Start of Mission 5th of September 1977 Distance to Earth 154 astronomical units Speed Around 17 km per second or 3.6 astronomical units per year Main goal Jupiter and Saturn Mission status Successfully completed Condition Not fully operational the contribution of Voyager 1 to the solar system's exploration can hardly be overestimated. It is thanks to this probe that several new Jupiter satellites were discovered, alongside its ring system, which was big news. The Voyager's cameras captured volcano eruptions on Io and provided hard evidence that Jupiter's great red spot is an enormous storm. The probe beamed back hundreds of photos of the largest planet of our solar system and its satellites. After the spacecraft crossed Neptune's orbit, the meters on board sent back a great amount of valuable data about interstellar plasma. Voyager 1 left both the Kuiper Belt and the heliopause behind a long while ago, and is now rapidly crossing the area of the solar system's scattered disk, making for the inner boundary of the hypothetical Oort cloud. It is not only the remotest man-made object in space, but also the fastest of all the spacecraft on their way to exit our system. Being the first space probe to have traveled that far from the center of the solar system, Voyager 1 offered scientists a unique opportunity to study the heliopause. This is the area around our Sun where solar wind pressure and interstellar gas pressure balance. When the charged particles emitted by the star collide with rarefied plasma, elaborate structures form out of elementary particles and magnetic fields. Studying them is crucial for understanding processes taking place in the universe. Unfortunately, by around the year 2025, the power of the radioisotope thermoelectric generators on board the probe will have run out completely and the connection will have been lost. In 300 years, Voyager 1 is estimated to reach the inner boundary of the hypothetical Oort cloud. It will take the spacecraft approximately 30,000 years to go clean through and after that, it will fly beyond the boundaries of the solar system. 10,000 years later still, the probe will fly by the star Gliese 445 at a distance of 1.6 light years, and then it will eventually get lost in the infinite depths of outer space. Speaking about Voyager 1, we can't but mention its twin, launched from the Earth on the 20th of August 1977. Voyager 2 had Saturn, Uranus and Neptune for its targets, but it also approached Jupiter for a gravity boost. It's the images taken by this probe that allowed scientists to assume that there are subsurface oceans on Ganymede and Europa. On reaching Saturn, 
Voyager 2 gauged the gas giant's temperature and magnetic field and discovered several new satellites. It goes without saying that lots of snapshots were taken of both Saturn's surface and its rings. Next in line on the probe's way were Uranus and Neptune. The flyby yielded a great number of unique snapshots, and in total 17 of the two planets' satellites were discovered. Also, it was found that both Uranus and Neptune have ring systems. Under Neptune's gravitational influence, the spacecraft changed its trajectory and left the ecliptic plane. This meant that Voyager 2 wouldn't be able to approach the other objects in the solar system, but it still had other exciting things to look forward to. Thus, the probe was to collect invaluable data about interstellar plasma and cosmic wind, as well as to measure distances to stars and explore the heliosphere. The probe is currently as far as 128 astronomical units away from the center of our system, with the distance growing by 15.37 kilometers every second. It's going to take it around 42,000 years to approach Ross 248, a dim red dwarf in the constellation Andromeda. The minimal distance between Voyager 2 and the star will be about 1.7 light years, and around 300,000 years since its launch, chances are it will fly by Sirius at a distance of 4.3 light years. Unfortunately, it is impossible to distinguish such a tiny object from the Earth that far away. We live at the dawn of space exploration, and interplanetary space probes are just mankind's first timid steps in exploring the infinite universe. It is hard to predict their fate. They may be smashed on collision with a celestial body, or they may be recaptured by our distant descendants, who will have advanced into stellar travel technologies to the point of being able to catch up with the probes. For all we know, they might recover them from space and put on display in a museum. But it is more likely that the fragile apparatuses are destined to drift on for years and years through the lifeless expanses. And millions of years later, radioactive rays and rare particles of cosmic dust whizzing through the probes time and time again will eventually wear them down to threadbare debris to be scattered across the depths of the universe without a trace.